Hey, everybody. Good morning. Let's just get here. Monday, September 25th. Well, that was the wrong button. I know I got some, honey, in case I can't read. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, Bonnie's on. Yay. I hope you guys had a wonderful <clears throat> weekend. I most certainly did. Let me show you something. Get a couple more people on here. We are going to go through a lot of minute. Oh, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> oh, dear. Ah, sorry. How can I answer questions if I don't have the paper in front of me? Just, just asking, okay? So, good morning, everybody. We had a glorious weekend here. It's why we live in Northern California and put up with what we put up with. But anyways, I saw this little cartoon, and honestly, it kind of struck me, all right? So let's take a look at it, because remember we did the kitty litter box thing. I'm thinking outside the box, and the owner saying, don't you dare to the kitten. So, um, they only taught me how to think outside the box. I'm not trained for circles. <laughs> People, that's what I'm feeling here. <laughs> We're working with circles. I, I, I worked on it this weekend and I'm like going, oh my gosh. <laughs> I, in advance, apologize for any misinformation I put out there, but I'm doing the best I can. So... I will cite an example of thinking outside of the box. I love clever comedians, all right? I always, and I don't even know where he is now, adored Carrot Top with all this weird stuff that he would, you know, pull out. It was, what, on usually on Regis and Kathy Lee or whatever. And then just make ridiculously funny things out of it, talking and, and using these props. So how do comedians, because they've got to be different, think outside the box? That's my question. I think I have the answer. So Joanne Sharp, you know, is a, a good friend of mine. And uh, they're going to Vegas on Tuesday. And they're going to go see um, Tape Face. <laughs> Tape Face. And so, of course, I had to go Google Tape Face. Tape Face was <laughs> America's Got Talent. And he does his complete routine with tape on his mouth, okay? So he can't talk like other comedians. And so what I did was I went to uh, YouTube and put in tape face, and there's about a 45-minute reel from his bits on America's Got Talent. And maybe some of you watched that show and you've seen it. I, I believe Joanne said he came in second that year. It is one of the most clever things I've seen. I, John and I were watching it, and there were like laugh out louds. So that is a comedian that is thinking outside of the box, going into a circle because he's losing his vocabulary. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's tape face. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to see what, because Joanne's going to see him, as I said, and I can't wait to see what she says. Okie dokie, everybody. I got some questions here, which is why I had to go run and get it. Uh, let me, okay, let me tell you how it's going to roll. First, I'm going to go through some imagery, which I always do. And then what I, we're going to work on half square triangles today. And what I'm going to do is, or what I did this weekend was I recorded three little videos because I honestly didn't know how I was going to do it in, um, in correct time. And it, and it worked out. All right. So first let's look at what I'm going. Um, let me see where, okay. So this is, I need a pencil. Well, not really. Yeah, I got one. So, um, Susie Roberts asked, um, did you say mixing cotton with silks is okay? Yes, it's okay. And in fact, serendipitously, Joe sent me this picture, an image of her quilt. That's, of course, of ties. But I thought, wait a minute, that, what is the background? What is the red? What is the border? It's cotton, 
okay? So you can mix in cotton. In fact, we did a show, um, and, and this person used everything on the ends of the earth in the quilts. I think the bottom line is, is that you have to make sure it's prepped properly. Oh, before I said, you know, I might suggest that you use a fabric prep or something. It's no longer a suggestion. It's a law. <laughs> okay. So here's a cotton. This is an oak shot that we had a while back in the store. It's not there anymore. Um, I mean, love this piece. Love it. And of course, I snapped them up when they were in there. Well, this is 100% cotton. So I thought, well, I don't have to line it. Look how I can see through it here on my shoulder here. Um, it, it didn't hold its own against this lined silk. So I ended up putting uh, fabric prep on it. So just be aware of the weight of the fabric, how it's behaving, etc. All right. I should get over her tape face. You know what? If I was going to a Halloween party, that's what I would do. But I make sure there's a hole in there for my straw. <laughs> so anyways, uh, Kyla was at Long Beach and saw this particular quilt. And it is by Jeanette Burke. And this is all silks. Now, what is interesting to me here is I want you to take note of how, because of the sheen of the silk, you can see just this absolutely beautiful quilting. So um, thank you, Kyla, for sending that. You know, I've got spies. Okay, then KK sent me a picture of this, and this is a, an upcycle, recycle situation. Her, um, she makes, there's an annual purse auction for her local hospital. She was given some ties and a suit from a retired teacher, and they said, get creative. Okay, the, these are really neat. And really, it's interesting, when we were just taping the last rounds of shows, people, I was amazed at how creative everybody, uh, I'm sorry, upcycling everybody is doing now. So, I, I mean, I would honestly, I think, I think I'd want the one to the left, although normally I'm kind of a big gal and I want the big purse. But that left one is super cute. And KK, you got creative, you showed them. All right, then um, Susan Skeels sent me this. Oh, Susan, forgive me. I, if you're on here, please, um, please do um, tell me what show it was, okay? And she got back a comment, and I want to discuss the comment. Uh, she used a print and piece fuse light for her finished applique, which is something that I adore. I could not do finished applique without it, but it does leave something in there. And what print and piece is, it is a fiber, well, a combination of fibers. And if you were to wash this quilt, they would break down to almost nothing. Well, Susan doesn't want to wash her quilt. So the judges mentioned that. And um, I will say that, oh, whoops, over time, it will break down, especially if it's used. And I know that because we would go to shows and we would be showing um, Quilt Stars print and piece and how it works. And, and I showed my little sample so many times, it just turned into this soft, soft mesh. So if it's all folded up in a box, no, it's probably going to stay like that for a while. But if it's used and loved, it will break down. So, but in the end, Susan likes working with that the best as I, so that's just kind of the consequence that comes with it. All right. And then I got from Grand Rapids. Hmm. Here we go. The Grand AQS Grand Rapids show is a gas, all right? And um, this is one of the old buildings there. I've, I've been there once. And uh, Des Moines Area Guild is where you got it. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Um, this is the hotel that's adjacent to the convention hall is this grand and this beautiful. All right. And then, look, we had our own little cubby there. We had our own little cubby. And so let's take a look at some of the color, color, is it color your wor world? Well, that um, we did for our BOM. By the way, speaking of our BOMs, 
we only have them um, for a year and then the artist takes them back and then sells the patterns and this is Wendy Williams this isn't Wendy Williams quilt this is um, another Wendy okay a Wendy Blanton Blanton I can only see partial words and then this is Judith's look at the quilting on that I'm just blown out at quilting these days oh look at the puppy on the top uh, street and a lot of you did take yours and personalize them just like Carol. And we've watched Carol do this all along. Uh, this is Carol's first quilt, people. Carol's first quilt. Um, Color My World. Carol, I'm glad you're here. Color My World. Please put down the name of your quilter. I, I saw it with Bonnie Browning, and she did a bang-up job. You said it was somebody in Utah. So she got a second place, but what I love in Bonnie Browning's interview, you probably could go to YouTube and put in Bonnie Browning AQS and pull it up, is that she tells you all the hidden secrets that are within this quilt. Mind you, her first quilt, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And then speaking of our BOMs, uh, Janet Stone did one, way back five years ago plus for us but of course she took another ribbon and I just I love that people send me these imageries because like you watching I can't get to all these shows I'm hoping this is in Houston I don't know if it'll make it just because of the timing I really want to see this particular quilt in person it is absolutely wonderful okay so again, I've got these questions. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through my three little videos, but I would like to do one video, of course, Carol. By the way, I told John that might be one of my favorite quilts in the whole, in the whole world. In the whole, whole world. <sighs> Seriously. Okay. Um, all right, all right. So where are we at here? Okay, so I'm gonna show you one, and then I'm gonna look for questions, and I can watch questions when I'm showing you the video. The other thing is one of you just wrote, I just glanced it sideways, and it was you don't have access to um, men's ties, but can you use silks and all that? Hey, you can use whatever you want. And it, it, it's a fun adventure, people. We are working in a circle right now. At least I'm working in a circle. Okay, so let's get up to the video and we'll start with number one. I hope you approve of this sort of um, learning. Okay, here we go. So I finally landed on the heart block that I got out of the Quilt Builder card deck. And it gives us, let me see, one, two, three, four, five different sizes that we can do. But I decided to go with an eight inch finished. Okay, we're going to have to do a little math here. And if it's eight inch finished, that means that this section finished is four by four. And this section finished is four by four. So I started with the half square triangles. I'm going to tell you, in a sense, this particular block is everything I've told you to avoid because it's got points everywhere. But I think I have some tips that will help you out. All right, what we're going to work on is this particular piece right here. It's so beautiful. And it's funny, as I started working with the silk, I remembered why it's so tricky. And it's so tricky because it is so slippery. So here is a tie. And here is some fabric prep. I cut the fabric prep, Quilter Select Fabric Prep, here. I know I'm going to want it at least four and seven eighths. I'm actually going to cut it at five, even though the instructions say four and seven eight. So I want it a little bit bigger, all right? And then rather go down to the big fat section of the tie. I got to tell you, there's some real buttes in here. I mean, this would fit in here you know, beautifully, but I don't want to waste that real estate. So I am going, make sure I get the right side. And how you know what the right side is, or the wrong side, this is the right side because the way the seam is right here. So I want to be the wrong side to iron this fabric prep on. And I'm going to kind of audition where I can not, I can go down as far as I need to go, but then stop so I'm not wasting fabulous, um, 
fabric down the road. Okay, I can feel the lumps on top. You do not want that. You want the lumps on the bottom. It's a sticky fusible that reacts with heat. What I'm going to, once again, just take my ruler. Oh yeah, I'm in good stead here. And I'm going to set my iron on medium for a couple reasons. One is the silk, but also when you're working with fabric prep, if it's too hot of an iron, it will destroy the, uh, it will melt it, it will destroy it. So just go ahead and do yourself a medium. This is a Panasonic, I have it on medium. And then you're going to, again, check one more time to put your, before you put your iron down. Just one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, okay. Then, because the instructions say to cut it at four and seven eighths, I am gonna take the liberty of cutting it at five. This gives me just a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to trimming up and getting it square. So I'm lucky that I happen to have a five inch QS ruler. And also if you don't have these handles, they're fabulous because they can help you pick it up, pick up the ruler because it does stick so well. Look at this, how I'm turning it. And there is the cut right there, all right? Now, you could cut it corner to corner, and then this one, corner to corner. Here, look. Pretty, pretty. But what I decided to do, and I think it's the best thing, is to layer them right sides together. All right. Oh, I didn't finish the thought. Cut it corner to corner, corner to corner, and then piece. And the problem is, because this stuff is so slippery, you're going to get a lot of weird things going on as you lead in and lead out. So, okay, four and seven eighths, cut at five. Let's say it tells you to cut it two and seven eighths. Okay, what do you cut at? Three, just up at one eighth. Then I'm going to take my uh, Sharpie felt tip pen and I'm going to exactly cut it corner to corner. Whoops, not, or not cut it, I'm sorry, mark it. Okay. Oh, I learned this in drafting school. This is a cool trick. Rather than, put that little knob on there. Once you use these little knobs, trust me, you don't want anything else. Rather than, you know, like trying to get it right, what I do, and I, again, I learned this in drafting school with a pencil, you put it right on the corner, put your ruler up, butt it down, and there you go. And then you draw corner to corner, all right? Because the silk is so wonky, I choose to do another quarter on this side and another quarter on this side. You could use your quarter inch foot, but in all of the shifting and everything, cut yourself some slack and do this. Okay, like that. Then I'm gonna turn, see, look at that, just doing that. Arr! All right, but I have some tricks for you. And there we go. All right. The, there, I would secure it. Look at it just picking up on my skin. It's just so squirrely. You can do a couple things. One thing you can do, and I did do when I was doing this, is I took my glue stick and I just put an itty bitty, little itty bitty bit right up here. Just an itty bit and a little itty bit right down here, but that's not enough, all right? What you're gonna wanna do then, or what I do, is use some really nice silk glass head pins and drop some pins in. Not really where you're gonna be sewing, but other places because you don't want like the corner to shift and things like that. The, the thing about working with silk is this is not for a quilt in the day. You, you have to really go the extra mile and take the extra time. All right, then let's go to the sewing machine and I'll show you what's next. Okay, <clears throat> um, Georgia, it's called Fabric Prep and we are Quilter Select Fabric Prep. We're <clears throat> out of stock, but I know we can get some from Shank within a couple days. So we'll get that for you. I just cannot say enough. You need to use this, all right? 
So let me see if there's any questions before we move on, because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to, we'll get to thread and stuff like that, twi twi Twyla. So, okay, let's go to the next, which is we're sitting at our sewing machine, and now what do we need to think about? And that is one of the things I'll talk about. You people are smart. Let's talk a little bit about the sewing machine and your needle and all that good stuff before we get started. I'm working on a Bernina 765. It was a special edition rose gold. And um, there are some things you need to know. If you have feed dogs that are wider, like on a lot of the um, more expensive Berninas, you're going to want to go and get a single hole throw plate. Otherwise, it's just going to get shoved down into the hole, the fabric. Secondly, I would generally recommend an 80 needle that's a universal. You could use a 70, which is smaller, but then your thread better be super fine. And speaking of super fine, my thread on top is a 60 weight quilter select. It's a poly, it's a cotton wrapped poly. The cotton helps grab the thread on the bobbin, which is an 80 weight poly, which I love. And the reason I like finer threads is because there's less like rollover when you go and iron it and it helps with your accuracy. So I'm keeping the stitch the same. I'm not changing that. I'm not changing really anything. Okay. But just make sure you've got yourself a single hole and make sure you have yourself, um, a nice thread and a nice needle. Oh, I forgot to mention in the other teaching segment before this, when you're cutting this fabric prep, you might find that your rotary cutting is skipping and things like that, time for a new blade. I thought, oh, this drive me crazy. And then I went and put a new blade in and duh, okay, there you go. All the difference in the world. So you can see here that I've pinned, like I just showed over here. And then you've also got the ends where you start and stop with just a little dab of glue, not a lot. So how I would suggest stitching this is what I hate using this expression, but a scant, just a scant right to the side of this line. And then that even gives it makes, it's going to make it a little more bigger and you will be trimming down. So the other thing I found it was really weird getting back into the silk because I had forgotten all the little minutiae that you need to think about. You, you use a little starter and ender. It just keeps things from shifting. So let's just, I have needle down position. I like that. But let's just stitch here. I will be grace under pressure. Oh, and if you have an even feed foot with Bernina and you have the D foot on, make sure you engage it or it's going to go like, whack a doodle on you. That is an official quilting word. I hope you know. <laughs> so here we go. And I am going to cut that little thing. Well, there's a couple things I'm going to do. Um, yeah, I'm going to cut it and go like this. And then start in and keep it as a lead. I do love my thre thread cutter. But this lead in and lead out is important. Okay, I lost it. So I'm going to go and do it again, just so it's there. All right, goody. Now I'm going to go on this side, and I'm just going to go right there. And you can see on this one, it wobbled a little bit, but not too much. Not too much. Okay. See just how, ni how nice that just feeds in. I didn't do that when I started working with the silk again, and it just got all the threads bunked up in a big fat mess on the bottom side. You know what I'm talking about. Here we go. And now, because I'm going to go to the ironing board, cutting an ironing board, I will use my thread cutter. I love that feature. It's so funny when you buy a new machine, it's like, oh, do I really need this stuff? And the answer is yes, I do. When they come out with a new machine, I just put my fingers in my ears and hum and <laughs> walk away because I love my girl so much. All right, so let's go and cut an iron.
This is working. <laughs> I like this a lot. Okay, Kathy asked, will stable stuff poly work? You're talking about Ricky stuff, right? Well, I happen to have it. Of course I do. And I ran over and I felt it. It's too thick. It's right in there like with my print and piece, fuse light or print and piece. It's, it's too thick. All right. Okay, any other questions here before we go to the next thing? Well, you know what? I'm just going to go to the next thing, and then I'll pick up questions if I need to. And I still have a couple more on this list. But I'm answering. I'm answering. All right. Here we go. Now, now, I'll say that after. <laughs> so here we go. Now it's time to cut, press, and trim. I see this little hair in here. I don't know that you can see it. Oh, boy. It's between the facing, the lining and this. Can't see it. The silk's thick enough. Okay, so the first thing I would do is everything that I haven't done up to this point in my quilt making world. <laughs> I would set the seam, learn that from Marianne Fawn. She couldn't believe I didn't do it. I would even consider them putting a clapper on top. In the past, I have shared with you that I use my little weighted iron clapper. And I think it's just fine, but the purest like wood ones. I mean, you could even have somebody just go and cut you some wood in different sizes, and there you go. Okay, I'm setting the seam so that they nestle into each other. The next, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut corner to corner. You, you, would, you would die laughing if you saw this. Or cry, feeling sorry for me. So I'm going to put this right on the center line. Oh, again, if you're if it's not cutting nicely, change your braid. We have really good ones in the store, and they're not as expensive as um, the competitors. Okay, so now let me get my little ironing surface back. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press to the dark right now because this is a much floppier tie then this one is much uh, more stable. In the end, I may have to press it the other way based on the construction of the block. So I'm going to press right side up, again, medium heat. Wait a minute. I think I put it on high. Oh, yeah, I don't want to do that. So, okay, I'm going to be very careful. You really, 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 really don't want to get any sort of um, crease in here. It is paramount that you take your time to do it right. Again, you might want to just go and put your clapper on top to help set those seams. All right. Now, I happen to know on the heart block <laughs> that, okay, here's the bottom part of the heart. I happen to know, because I've made it, that if one side goes this way at the bottom of the heart, the other side goes that way. And that's going to be a little bit of a push. I just contradicted myself, but I've made this already, and I know. It's going to be really tough to make it go to this one, because the silk is um, much, much heavier. So let me just do this, just kind of get it going in that direction. And I do, for the most part, yes, I'm using steam, like to, um, there, from, uh, iron from the top, because you can see, like, there are little tucks and things like that. I am not opposed at this point by putting on Acorn's precision piecing um, press at all. Because we really, we have to tell these silk ties who's in control <laughs> thank you bernie and shelly for making a product that we can tell our pieces that we are in control and they are not very careful very very careful and the truth is if i had my glasses on it might even be more successful <laughs> here we go and grab on both squares so i can really check you can see already there's been some stretching and, and all of that going on, and that's even with the fabric prep on the back. All right. I might just put a little bit of that on for good measure, too. All right. Yes. 
All right. Now comes the moment of truth. Let's cut. So we want this to be four. Once it's been sewn together, now it should measure four and a half because then when it's all sewn together, it will then measure four. So we want this at four and a half. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line and make sure that it is consistent all the way down. All right. I'm going to find my four and a half. I'm being very, very mindful. A little bit more that way. You find piecers, you would be very proud of me because often I'm close enough. It's just fine, not in this case. All right, so let's see what's going on here. You can see down here, it's wiggling out. Great, I can trim it. You can see here that this is exactly on this line or as close to exact as I can get. And I'll tell you, these non-slip rulers are the bomb when it comes to working with silk. Go like this. Oh, and I'm also gonna wanna make sure when I go to the corner that the absolute corner goes to the corner of the block. Okay. Yep, that looks good. Then I'm going to do it the other way. Okay, that's a little bit off, wah, but I'm gonna live with it. That's way off. Imagine if I hadn't added that extra eighth of an inch, I would have been really in trouble. So now you have your raw four and a half, four and a half, that will finish beautifully into finished four inches when it's all said and done. A little bit of caution goes a long way way on working with silk ties but man are they beautiful or what okay some uh, good questions came up all right uh, somebody asked about misty fuse I wouldn't use misty fuse is a fusible it'd be like saying can I use steam a seam it's a completely different product no and I'm pretty darn sure we can have that fabric prep in very very fast but you really want to use it and in the beginning of this whole project, I was like, well, if you want to, you know, or you can do this. I have very strong feelings now about the whole thing. And then Twyla asked, could you press the seams open? In fact, you could, but I find when, these are my general rules that I go to. If I've just got, say, four seams coming together, which would be the case at that point, I like things in opposite directions because then I get... A better nestling it, it, it helps me with accuracy I do know a lot of people do press their seams open if you're gonna press your seams open and I only do it usually when there's six or more things coming together make sure your threads kind of match because as you go like this the threads will show all right so yes people do I do believe on the heart block at some point I did press a couple things open if I'm finding that it's just like a shove to go one way or another, yeah, I would go open. But that's when you have to use your quilting knowledge. Um, and yes, Georgia, I did put fabric prep on both sides. It's going to be on everything beside, behind this quilt. And Kathy, I think the main thing about mixing prints and this and that is you pay attention to the colors and also to the value. Now, mine's going to get scary. Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the heart. Let's hear this. That's the heart I showed you in the beginning. Okay, pretty good. Um, here's what's on my wall right now. And this is why a design wall is so important. So the upper right one is the first finished one I did. As I look at this on the design wall, the pink that runs through the center is awfully bright and it jumps out. And that's okay because <clears throat> I just have to make sure as I go forward, I am mindful of that, and they all don't have that. The one to the left, I thought, you know, I'm not going to have enough pink. So <clears throat> let's try throwing in some kind of grays with pink in there for the center sash. I guess that's what you call it. And I, But I'm not sewing it together. And bottom right, I haven't done the center thing yet. I'm not sewing it together. I'm just putting it on the wall. 
And then in into the question of can I use other fabrics, yes. I thought, oh, maybe that one on the right would be great. No, it's actually quite horrible. If I didn't have the design wall, I wouldn't know that. But the upper left is from our rice bags. That'll work great. And the bottom left is an oak shot. And it will work very, 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 very well. So so that's kind of where, where we're at today. What I want to talk about on Wednesday, take your time, people. Just take your time. On Wednesday, I'm going to talk about flying geese. I think I have a way of, I'm trying to get it as perfect as I can before it has to be sewn to the next block. And I think I, I have a way, okay? Um, and I'll show you what happens when you have to take something apart. Because, oh look, maybe I marked the wrong side. <laughs> so I had to take this off and we'll talk about that. I appreciate all questions that you ask me. Oh, let me see. Um, can I use Pelon 911F fusible featherweight to back the silk ties? I'm not familiar with that product, but Carla, give it a try. Give it a try. If it's super fine, yes. Um, what backing to use for the quilt? You can use whatever you want. Um, and then Noella from Quebec, she always says that it's so cute. Can we use a Teflon sheet to iron with? Um, I don't think you need it, all right? I just don't think you do. How to block a silk quilt? I don't know. <laughs> we'll learn this together, okay? And uh, will this strictly be an art quilt or used care? Susie Roberts. I don't know, Susie, but I will tell you this. My girlfriend, Robin, just finished a silk quilt, and she had it backed with minky. It is delicious, and she plans to use it. We can't hold these quilts so precious unless we're Carol and we have that wool quilt. <laughs> you know, you kind of just let them, you know, take its fate and move on with it. Okay. Then uh, Susie has one more question and I'm, I'm going to sign off. My last question isn't about silk. I asked my long arm quilter to baste a quilt so I could hand quilt it. And when I got it back, she had done an all over pattern. Um, have you ever, or have you ever heard of someone adding hand quilting to a quilt that's been machine quilted. Sure, um, you can mix those things all the time. Just just make sure it makes sense. And I think that's really curious that your quilter did that. I don't know. Are they basting stitches or are they tight stitches? You know, if they're basting, you can do whatever you want and then pull them out. If they're tight, yeah, you gotta, you know, get ingenious. Ingenious, ingenious. Okay, have a great day. And um, I'm very excited about what's on my wall. I haven't felt this happiness in a very long time, creatively. It's been wonderful. The other thing I want to say too, yes, I still have those Bernina certificates, those $100 certificates. I have to mail it out before you purchase it. And I say that because I think they have a pretty good sale going on right now, in case you're looking at a, a new machine. And again, I love my 700 series. So I will... Uh, see you Wednesday. This has been great. Thanks, guys. And thank you, people. <laughs>